Welcome to Engineering Skill Models. I am Jason, your host, and there's nothing on the bench. And why is that? Because this is a special episode. I'm going to give you a mild shop tour, and I'm going to talk about some of the tools I'm currently using for the projects that I'm currently working on. Um, as you know, I do some gameplay videos, and I do modeling videos, and I'm going to start doing some casting and resin work. And I have a small area. I have a workbench that is... Um, a little over four foot wide and four foot by three foot wide has a one foot shelf on the back here Let's see and I have some drawers up there I have my little mini tools there see my camera rig that's my overhead and this is a little webcam and I have my two monitors and then I have a table to my left that is extremely messy that needs to be cleaned up but this is hobby mode um, this is what I I have on my bench I have a cutting mat I have my my little hobby tool thing and everything scattered around that I'm currently using and I am in the process um, a buddy of mine plays guitar and is um, so I'm making some resin picks to learn the resin casting process and molding process so I've used some different things to make some molds of guitar picks and then I cast them in resin and I'm learning the properties of the resin whether it's better to weigh it out by weight or volume and all that good stuff so I I've been working on that and for that I have a little little digital scale that I put a piece of plastic on to keep the metal part of the scale from getting dirty if it gets resin or something on it I could pop that piece of plastic off and replace it um, I started out by hand shaping this into a guitar pick this is just one of the designs um, the, the diamond design is the only one I've made a mold and casted um, using different types of resin that one was an alumalite high strength mold it's a little lower viscosity so I could pour it without degassing it I have some other molding stuff that I'm going to be working with this right here this Umu 30 um, this is a pretty good resin it, it, about 30 minute pot life and 6 hour uh, cure time but it needs to be vacuum degassed and I got a tiny vacuum degasser coming because I'm only going to be doing little things but that said, what else am I working on? I am doing um, doing some game videos, as you can see here. On that shelf is all the Dungeon Saga guys and some zombie side people. So I mix it up. I can just move the cutting mat and set up for a game and just move some stuff and I'm good to go. But currently I'm working on um, some wax carvings to cast molds of it. If you see my ESM logo, and I talked about this in an update video, I'm working on just carving and design. I've never carved wax before, so I've been messing around. So I got a I got a cheap wax carving kit from Amazon. It came with a, a jewelry wax saw. It came with one of these bench pen things that you can cut on. So I plan on setting that up and using that later. Also came with this little box of tools here. Um, a little wax melting pen thing that gets hot and you can melt the wax with um, some wax files and some different picks and gouges and a, and a jewelry loop I haven't opened yet but I don't, I don't think I'll ever need a jewelry loop it might work for a scale model or something but a little jewelry loop came in this kit so it's not a bad kit um, comes with everything you need it even comes with an alcohol lamp you do need denatured alcohol don't use regular alcohol but that's good for heating up the tools and um, wax is also good for casting molds and things like that so I'm using it to make runners and and for two-part molds I've come up with a injectable wax that I could ladle into the bottom half of a mold to get the mold line perfect pour in the make some keys and then pour in the silicone to make the first half of the mold and the way I found to do that is 
with these little bitty crock pots. It's a little bitty crock pot. It's, I think it's 16 ounces. It's for heating up your lunch. But if you get a low melting temperature injectable wax, which is in there, and I just put some cellophane in there in case my wife wants to use this for something else. But you just let this run. You, you, you get in your shop, you turn this on, and a couple hours later you have liquid wax. You can use it for sealing stuff. You can use it with a ladle spoon. That I'm not going to be able to follow. I use it with one of these spoons here. Get it, and then I can very quickly pour it out because if the, I warm up the spoon with the alcohol lamp so it doesn't solidify instantly. And you can get it, and then you can scoop it and pour it in your mold up to the level of your thing. You know, clean it up a little bit, and you're good to go. Also, for you know, mold making and you know, working on some stuff, I also have one of these little crock pots for clay. This is a Chivant clay, it's an oil based clay, and I can warm it up in this crock pot to make it malleable. Because it, it's like it's like 68 degrees in here. Um, it's Florida, but the air conditioner is very efficient. So this room seems to get the coldest because the door's shut. So it's very hard to work with like clay and wax without it cooling instantly. So a little crock pot like this warms it up you can also this will also liquefy it in about two hours so um, you can scoop it out with the spoon yet again and pour it to get the bottom half of a mold cut some keys in it and then pour your silicone and then peel off the um, peel off the um, wax and then cast your second half so that's what I've been working on um, also I got some um, super thin plexiglass picture frame um, glass plastic plexiglass picture frame material and it makes some great mold boxes this is going to be a mold box for a guitar pick um, once I get my vacuum degasser just super glued it on there and taped up the sides um, I'll put some hot glue around the base to keep it from leaking um, we get some patch wax for patching holes and mistakes that you make in your, in your carvings I said oil lamps and then I got a assortment of wax to carve what I am looking to do is and I haven't worked out all the details but I have the mini mill which is up there the mini mill is right there this is the mini mill and then over behind that cutter is a dividing chuck and what I'm hoping to do is chuck this round piece or a different round piece a slightly smaller purple that's easier to carve but chuck this in the dividing chuck and then make my sweeping cuts for the the logo uh, with a um, 16th inch ball end mill and just I could turn the dividing chuck and then move to my different points. After I lay it out with a compass, I can move to my different points and then just turn it to make my make my hooks. So it kind of look like a saw blade and kind of look like a galaxy. I'm not quite sure. I could make it so they, they wrap around more. I'm still working on the layout. If I do it that way, could hand carve it, but I think using the mini mill would be a good example of how to use the dividing chuck and the mini mill. I also got some wax burrs to use in the micro motor here. Um, they keep falling out but I got some little micro burrs to use in there. So this was what I got. I just carved this with basically this dental pick right here. I just you know went in there. I laid out the points with a pair of dividers and I was able to just make that weird shape not quite sure where I was going with it I was just testing it um, that's a good thing to have even if you do just scratch building or you want to do work with wax or anything but if you're gonna do scratch building and it is very nice to have a set of dividing calipers now I have two sets this is um, 
this is the general brand um, they're very cheap they're very sharp the points are a little bent out and crooked but for wax they serve their purpose um, they'll work on plastic like say you have this bottom of this square and you want a line you know this far in you could just go across there like that and it'll mark your line that far in and then you know you could come along this side like this that and then this side And then you have a mini square in there if you want to cut that out or you can drill these four corners or you can measure over and you'll have all your lines on a point. And I'll show you that I did that on this. I mean that's how I drilled lined up these four holes here or these six holes. I just took my dividing calipers and marked it. And then I marked it, the holes and center punched them and drilled them out. So that's these like I said they're 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 a little cheap they're a little inaccurate uh, these these are my babies okay if it comes to tools um, any of my serrat tools are I treat with the utmost care and I use them rarely when the situation calls for it these are serrat dividers these are fantastic the point on them is excellent they are very precise very fine micro threads to get a very precise measurement. Um, when I was doing engineering I used um, Serret um, and Brown and Sharp was for measuring equipment is what I used. I, I prefer Brown and Sharp over Serret. Um, some people prefer Michitoyo but I was never a fan of Michitoyo. I preferred Serret and Brown and Sharp. Um, Brown and Sharp was my go-to for calipers or veneers, however you want to call it. Um, they were my go-to. Uh, I loved them. I didn't use digital. Um, anything low cost now is digital. Like um, I don't have um, like these cheap things here. I wish I had my calipers from work, but um, I have this cheap set. It's like twenty bucks. I don't know how accurate it is, but for scale models, it's as accurate as I'm probably going to need it. Um, I like to be a little bit more accurate. I know the mini mill, the Proxon tools are super accurate, so I kind of check my measurement a couple different ways to make sure that I'm spot on with the calipers. So I check it with different ways. Um, another good thing to have are these cheap um, rulers. You can get these in uh, metric or English. This is in 30 seconds and 60 fourths. Um, you can buy them. I lose them like crazy, but you can buy them in bulk like I have. Like I bought a three pack for like $4. Um, you can also get um, longer ones that have metric and English on it. Um, I have three different size, four different sizes of these. I have a six, an eight, a 12, and a 14. And then I have one good one and should be in here. Yeah, right here. This is, this is actually Midget Toyo, I believe. Yes, it is. Um, it is a, a machinist ruler scale. Um, it's in tenths, so tenths and hundredths. And then it's got millimeters down to half millimeters on one side, and this goes by tenths. I've mostly worked in tenths, tenths and thousands. That's how, uh, in hundreds. That's how I've always uh, did my engineering. Was in, you know, within a half a thousandth or within four thousandths or whatever the tolerance was. So I'm used to doing it in thousands, but I've slowly converted to a millimeter system. But I can I can go either way with it. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm used to it. So that is what's going on. I have Dungeon Saga is it gets pulled out and I make a video and then it gets pushed back and then I get back on to um, doing some modeling. I'm very interested in getting this silicone and resin um, working out um, because the pieces are so thin they take forever to cure. I don't know if it's a mixing issue but I've casted three different ones. Um, two different kind of resins and some different casting 
uh, by weight, by volume, and by different amounts. Like a larger batch, is that more accurate than a smaller batch? And I've been testing it to see how it goes. But yesterday these were super soft, and now they're they're firming up. And I have a blue one in here somewhere. That was my first or second one. I don't know if I have it in here. No, it's not in there. But there's a there's a blue set. Here it is right here. There's a blue set that I made first. This was one of the oh, this is the first pigmentable one. But it has a variable degree of flex to it. And uh, from what my friend tells me, that's not something that everybody looks for in a guitar pick. But this red one has significantly less flex in it. So I'm wondering if there's any kind of issue with that. So that's what's going on. I look at some stuff. Um, the tools, I have different videos. I'm not sure when this video is going to go out, but different things. One last thing I want to touch on is when you're working on your model bench, and most people, they get dirt, dust, and they sweep it on the floor and deal with it later. I have one of these computer vacs that's fantastic. This has a uh, micro mesh filter, so it picks up everything. And it also has a clean air dust free blower on the other end. So the filter is so fine that no dust comes out of the blower end. So it's pretty good. It um, It's loud. But I use this to clean up my work area. So I clean up my work area here. And um, it's rechargeable, USB rechargeable. And you know, I charge it up about once a week and I empty it about once a week so it's a handy little thing to have if you just to, just to, you got a pile of dust just still sweep it on the floor you know leave the floor for your parts you lose so that way you're not digging through dust to find them so I always I always grab for that and vacuum up my piles of dirt and debris now unfortunately using this weird bench pen thing it kind of pushes me out over the floor so it's something I have to take off when I'm not using it because my it'll dig into my stomach if I try to work on the table so but I did cut out some some wax yesterday trying it and it was extremely useful um, holding it by hand just doesn't give you the accuracy and this seems to give you the accuracy you need to proceed so that's going to do it for this video. I'm going to cut it here, about uh, 18 minutes. You can check out my links on social media, post some random stuff every once in a while. You can also support the channel on Patreon. Check out all the cool stuff I have up there. There will be more going up. Thank you so much, and have a fantastic day.